Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to take another look at uh, bolt hole patterns. If you recall in the last video I did on in this series, uh, we had a bolt hole pattern that we wanted to replicate, but we did not know the diameter. If you recall from that video, I pointed out that two things you absolutely had to have to create a bolt hole pattern was first off how many holes was in the pattern. In this case there were five. Secondly, what is the diameter of that circle? The diameter of the bolt hole pattern. In the case we looked at it in the in that other video, in the previous video in the series. We could count the number of holes, but we had no easy way to determine what the diameter was. In other words, this center spot in here to one of those holes would have been the radius, but it's very hard to find that center spot. So what we did in that video was determine the distance between the bolt holes, and from that use a little bit of trigonometry. Let's look right quick at that formula and re review it right quick. Okay, what we had to do in this case was determine what the diameter of the bolt hole pattern was. So we wanted to solve for the bolt hole pattern diameter. The formula was the distance between the centers divided by the sine of 180 divided by the number of holes. We knew the number of holes was 5. We were able to measure the distance between these centers. If you recall from that video, I measured all five of them and averaged it out, and we came out with 1.411. By the way, I'll try to link that video, uh, try to remember to put a card to it, and also link it in the description. But our formula for the diameter was B which is the distance between the centers, 1.411, divided by the sine of 180, divided by the number of holes. All right, 180 divided by the number of holes was 36. 180 divided by 5 was 36. We found the sine of that, which was 0.588. So 1.411, which was at a distance between centers, divided by the sine of 36.588 gave us a diameter of 2.4. From that we went to the DRO on the mill and we laid out a bolt hole pattern with a diameter of 2.4 with five holes in it. And we were able to create this. We threaded the holes and then we were able to simply put it together. If you recall everything, all five of the holes matched fine. Now what I'd like to do in this video is take another blank piece of material. This is about a three inch square material. This is aluminum that I'm working with in this series. But what I'd like to do is lay out a bolt hole pattern on this that will match this existing one. Remember this was the one we had and we couldn't find the center or we found the diameter and drilled and tapped the bolt hole pattern on the mill. I want to do this one with simply some holes that will slide over that but do it on the drill press. No DRO at all. So I'm going to zoom you back in down here again and show you what I imagine is how this was done without math. As I've said so many times before, I'm not a machinist. I'm just a hobbyist. I've only ever been in a machine shop. Uh, only ever been in one machine shop in my whole life and that was to get some welding work done. But, uh, uh, so I'm speculating a little bit on, on this, 
but let's zoom in and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, when I say I'm speculating, I'm going to show you a scientific way of laying this out or finding the dimensions required to lay this out uh, with exact measurements. But and it's going to be using trigonometry again. But without that, I'm, spec I'm just speculating now on how it might have been done or how it might be done uh, without using any trigonometry. First off, I'm just going to take my uh, high school geometry class uh, potential or compass here and draw an arbitrary circle. I have no idea what this diameter is. I'm just drawing an arbitra arbitrary circle. Hopefully I'm getting this dark enough so you guys can see it. Alright, so there's a circle. Now let's say we wanted to lay out five holes in that. Where do we start? Well, we just guess at something. I'm going to take a set of dividers here. And I don't know. I'm just going to arbitrarily choose something. My starting point, I'm always going to use the same starting point. So I'm going to put me a little cross right there. That will remind me that's where we're starting every time. It's where we're starting and ending up. So I've got these dividers set on some arbitrary value. We want five holes. There's one, two, three, and obviously this is way too wide because our fourth one is even past that. So let's come on in a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, and we come up way short that time. So we'll Come back out a little bit. One, two, three, four. Still too wide. If you notice, I'm not making a whole lot of change in this. One, two, three, four, and we're getting close. So what I would do in this situation, I would take this setting, come over here and put me a couple punch marks in, in my paper, or scribe marks on my material, and I'm going to mark that one with an L as being a little bit long. Alright, I went in about a half a turn there. One. Two. Three. Four. And that one, I'm, I don't know if you can tell it, but it's, uh, it's about a quarter inch short. And that distance between being a quarter inch short and a just about three eighths long is less than a tenth of an inch. <clears throat> I'm going to make, that one's a little bit short. I'm going to come back out just a little and try one more time here so one two three four and I'm a, just a hair short again there but you get the idea very non-scientific way of 
laying out a bolt hole pattern just using a set of dividers. Now if this was a piece of steel, aluminum, or maybe you, you try it all on your piece of paper like this first to get it closed and then use this same setting on the dividers and go to your actual material piece. I want to show you now an absolutely foolproof way of finding that. Yeah, that's another trick for me. Let me get set back up and then we'll look at this. Or maybe you can see it there. We want to solve for the distance between these centers. Remember from the previous video, again, and previously in this video, two things we must know is the number of holes in the bolt hole pattern and secondly what the diameter of it is. In the scenario we're looking here, we know there's five holes in the bolt hole pattern. And we're, we're told there's five holes and the diameter is 2.4. Remember in, in the previous video, we didn't know the diameter. We knew the number of holes and the distance between the centers. And from that, we were able to calculate the diameter. You remember your high school, or probably your grammar school math, simple formula, 6 equals 2 times 3. 6 equals 2 times 3. Well, what if we wanted to solve for 2? We put that on the other side of the equal sign, 2 equals 6 divided by 3. Change multiplication to division. In the previous video case, we knew the distance between centers, or I'm sorry, we knew, yeah, let me get that one. We knew the number of holes and we knew the distance between centers. We measured those. We knew the number of holes and distance between centers. So with some simple math, trigonometry, doing division here, we were able to come up with the diameter. Now we know what the diameter is, our workpiece, our, uh, our specs we were given, whatever, told us the two things we needed. We needed the number of holes and the, what the diameter was. But we don't have a DRO to lay that out on. We don't even, maybe don't even have a mill to use the XY table on. All we've got is a drill press and some drills. So how do we determine the distance between centers. It's the diameter multiplied by the sine of 180 divided by the number of holes. Very, very similar formula to the previous one except we're moving, in this case, we're moving two on the other side of the equal sign and changing from multiplication to division. So we say the diameter times the sine of 180 divided by n. If you remember from that previous example, 180 divided by n was 36, and the sine of 36 was 0.588. Let's look at that one more time uh, on the calculator. All right, let's look at 180 divided by the number of holes. 180 divided by 5, which was the number of holes, is 36. Now to get the sine of 36, we're going to rotate our iPhone calculator, and down here is the sine button. So there's the sine of 36.587785. We're going to round that to .588 and we can multiply that times the 2.4. We're told the diameter, 2.4. Oops, 2.4.
1.41061.411, which if you recall, using the same type data is what we determined to be the distance between centers before. So now we know the distance between centers. In this exaggerated example where we use the dividers, we just kept guessing. Kept setting something and guessing, setting and guessing. So let's zoom back down on the on our work material now and see if we can do this a little bit more scientifically. Before we get down to our actual workpiece and laying that out, I want to say a couple words about <coughs> the previous two videos in this series. The first one was well over a month ago and had to deal with uh, using trigonometry here in the shop to determine the taper angle to set your compound on your lathe or the angle to set your compound on the lathe to turn a taper. Now, for whatever reason, that video <laughs> was one of my very worst performing videos that I've put out since I've started doing this. Uh, it still has barely got what I consider the minimum amount of, amount of views that I look for uh, in the first week of publication in, in between videos. That's been well over a month ago and it, like I say, it's, it's barely reached that, that minimum. The second video I did in matching a, an existing bolt hole pattern, for whatever reason, I don't know whether it was the title that attracted people or whether it was the thumbnail that, that attracted people, but it's been the very highest performing video. Uh, and in the two weeks since it was published, it's already got 10 times the number of views that I consider uh, the minimum amount to have to be a successful video. So I'm not sure what the difference was, uh, what attracted you guys to that video. Again, maybe it was the title of the video, video or the thumbnail. But hopefully you guys are responding to this one. If you've made it this far, your view already counts. All right, so let's look down at how we can lay this out manually and try to match that up on a drill press. Okay, back to our piece of paper again. We were given two things to begin with. We were given the number of holes, which was five. We were told the diameter, which was 2.400. And using trigonometry, we settled, or we solved for the distance between centers, which is 1.411. So let's see if we can do this on paper. And you guys keep in mind now, doing it on paper with this uh, uh, high school compass pencil is not going to be exact. Not going to come out exact, but I can guarantee you that number is exact. This whole exercise is going to be dependent on how good you can draw a circle 2.4 and how good you can measure 1.411. Let's start out. Let's start out by measuring all right, the radius of a 2.4 diameter is 1.2. That's 1.995. All right, I'm going to put just a couple little punch marks in my paper down here. And then I'm going to, if I can find them punch marks, now I'm going to set my compass up to that value. And again, this is going to be how good I can come up with a 2.4 diameter bolt hole pattern or circle. I'm just going to start with a straight line here. And try to draw draw my circle. Now I'm going to lay out the 1.411 
All right, that's one and a half a thousandths. I'll get myself a couple punch marks with that too. And now I'm going to try to set my dividers to that value. See what I'm going to use a smaller set of dividers here that's got a bit sharper point on them. And as I hope you can tell, I've not done any of this ahead of time. All right, let's see how well our drawing our circle. There's one, two, three, four, and that is about the pencil width longer. So hopefully proof of concept here that this works. What I'm going to do now, if I can find my workpiece, there it is. What I'm going to do now is try to lay, lay out a 2.4 diameter circle on here. Then step it off. Well, let's do it. Again, I want to set this to 1.2. I've got a center hole punch. All right. Now I just scribed a small little line right there. Let's get these. This set of dividers will try to get it set as close to possible. Not sure if y'all can, how well you can see it. I can just barely see that on there. All right. And I think what I want to do is get me a center line through this. This piece is, I was thinking this was a nominal piece, 3.3, .3, half of that. 1.65 all I'm doing here is just like I did that straight line here I want a starting point all right we'll call that our starting point now we want to set this to 1.411 all right so I'm going to Set on that point right there where I made that center line through and scribe that first arc right there. Now we'll use the dividers. And again, I want to reiterate one more time. The success of this is going to be how well I laid out a 2.4 diameter circle and how well I laid out the 1.44 for the distance between centers. Don't have a DRO. I'm doing this by sight. So let's let's see if it will come out. All right, so there's one. There's two. Here's three. And sorry if my hand and arm's getting in the way. I got fussed at on the last video for that. Here's four. If you notice, I'm keeping one leg of the calipers, the dividers down at all times. And folks, that come out right on the, again, I don't know that you can see this, but that's about half the width of that scribe line. But I'm going to take my punch now, and I'm going to punch each one of these as best I can hold it on center, or hold it on that hatch mark, the hash mark that I made.
All right, so there's the five holes in our bolt hole pattern. Let's carry this to the drill press. Center up on these holes and drill them out and see if it will match what we did on the DRO. I'm over here at the Powermatic uh, drill press now and what I did before I mounted this in the vise was take my center punch and enlarge each one of those holes doing my best in my best ability to keep it in the center punch that we made over there so I've got a quarter inch bit now we're gonna drill these five holes and then see how well it matches these five quarter inch uh, socket head cap screws this don't match up let me say it one more time it's not because of the math the math is perfect uh, I didn't create math nature created math what could cause this to fail is if I didn't get a perfect 2.4 circle or within the tolerance of a quarter inch drill bit or this distance between centers let's just see if it will Well, let me take it out of the vise. Needs a lot of deburring. But there is a bolt hole pattern on the drill press matched to one made on the made on the DRO on the mill. Let me deburr this right quick. Now, come to think of it, it might be easier to hold it just by hand to do that. I'm not reaming out anything, I'm just deburring. It's, it's still a bit tight, but it will match up. Let's go back over to the workbench right quick and do a, do a recap. Let's do just a a quick little clean out of a hole with a little small file, a rat tail file. Still a couple of burrs on that back. With just a gentle bit of persuasion, there we go. Just a gentle bit of persuasion, it goes on there. I think that's uh, I think that's good for for having laid out. And there's a burr come out there. But anyhow, for having laid this out by hand. 
using a simple set of dividers and my calipers or uh, to try to get the uh, the dimensions and then drilling that on a drill press I think that laid out pretty good remember the two formulas Give you a moment to do a screenshot of these if you don't have them already. This is the one from a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago, I believe it was now, where we solved for the diameter. We knew the number of holes and the dis and we measured the distance between centers. So here was our formula. Today's video, we know the diameter and the number of holes which is all we would need if we were going to the to the mill with a DRO but to lay this out manually we needed to solve for the between the centers which here was the formula to do that you saw me lay it out around here again with the with the pointy dividers and then drilling on the drill press. So it works if you do not have a drill, I'm sorry, if you do not have a mill with a uh, DRO on it, you can do a bolt hole pattern with some simple math and a drill press. You guys take care. I'll see you on the next video.